Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series of using sound in Unreal. And in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about a thing called sound cues. So if you've been following through with this series of videos, then so far we've been using sound wave assets. Um, but you'll have seen that uh, there is another option, which is a sound cue asset. Um, and the sound cues are uh, a bit more complicated than sound waves in that they give you some processing or the ability to manipulate the sound in all sorts of ways. Uh, in some ways similar to having a um, a blueprint class, but not quite the same as you'll see. Uh, so we're going to dive in and start using sound cues rather than just straight sound wave assets. So I should have said I've got a third-person template map here set up with the starter content, and I've got four sounds that I've imported from a website called Freesound, which is just there. Um, so let's have a quick listen to these web uh, these uh, sounds that I've imported. That's a creaking door. Uh, we've got. You might recognise that sound and that. Uh, kind of clonking sound, and that. That's some water being uh, taken out of a water cooler. Uh, we might not use that one, we'll see where we go. Okay, so the easiest way to create a, a sound cue is to take a sound asset, uh, sorry, a sound wave asset, right click on it, and then up here, go to create cue, and it'll create an automatic cue based on it. Um, let's call it, uh, giving it the name, using the, the wave sound, I'm just going to call it uh, Bubbles Q. And if we open that up, there's a, uh, an editor which has a graph which looks a little bit like a, uh, a blueprint class editor. Uh, but the nodes are different, and the most important node is this node, which is the output node. And it's automatically given us um, a sound wave player node which plays the sound that we um, wanted to make a cue from. And this, at the moment, with it set up, just works exactly as if we were just playing that uh, that wave. So if we test it out by clicking play. That's that. But there'd be really no point in doing that if we didn't want something extra in there. So we're going to do another way of creating a sound cue, which is to right-click in the asset area and go to sounds and choose sound cue. And this creates an empty queue, and I'm going to just call it my queue. And when we open that up to look, we've just got the output. You've got to have the output node, because otherwise nothing's going to happen. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, let's, uh, in fact, let's start with the, the music sound that's the built-in thing. And we'll just uh, go down, and I've just right-clicked there, but we've also got over here, uh, a palette of things we can use, so I'll use from there. And we've got a wave player, which is the one that plays away, fairly obviously. And then when I highlight that, so the details is on the opposite side from what you'd expect on some of the other editors. Uh, but yeah, it's not that hard to find. Um, and so we're going to select the sound wave and we're going to use the music, which is starter music. So I can just plug that in to the output and that'll play. We are going to do some more processing of that in a minute. So I'm going to uh, just set up in this pad the, um, so that it'll have that cue in as a component and we'll start playing and stop playing as we stand and uh, go off the the pad. So just create an audio node and it's using a sound cue is just like using um, a sound wave, and we just choose the one that we want, and I call it my cue. So, I in there, that should come up, and we can use the same functions on it. Um, actually, it gives us added functions as well. But we'll come to some of those. Uh, so, I'm going to play when you stand on, um, and stop when you step off. As always, because I'm doing stuff live, my spelling is worse than normal. That's all I claim anyway. Um, and I want the actor uh, to end overlap. 
Uh, so we'll just give that a quick test. I'm pretty sure that's going to work. Ah, so I have forgotten to switch off the auto activation. It was a good thing I tested. Uh, auto activate is down there. Let's try that. Right. So if you've been following along these videos in order, you the last thing that I did in the previous video was uh, do a thing with uh, uh, with the sound so that you could uh, go um, in the randomness so you can change the pitch of the music. Um, and that's okay for fairly straightforward randomization, but there are all sorts of other things you can do if you're doing it inside a queue. Um, so, as you see on this side here, there's loads of different uh, things. There's branches, there's attenuators, and there's stuff that I don't know what they do. There's stuff that I can guess some of what they do. Delay, I can guess that that's going to pause playing for a while. Uh, dialogue is to do with the dialogue system, which we're not going to dip into. Uh, Doppler is to do with the sounds that change as fast things go past, like sirens that go, nee -no, nee -no, nee -no, as they go past. Uh, envelope is to do with the shape of the sound. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but I'm going to go to the modulator, uh, which is the one that will change either the volume or the pitch. Um, and um, I'm going to actually create three versions of this. So there's the standard version without a modulator, and I'm going to do another modulator there. Um, once again, if we highlight it, we get values on the over on the left hand side so this gives us a range of pitch but we want to fix these to an absolute pitch and i'm going to fix this one to 1.5 pitch uh, which is half an octave up and uh, volume to one so that doesn't vary either and for the second one i'm going to change that to two and with a bit of experimentation i found that i don't seem to be able to get it higher than two so we'll stick with that so that will be an octave up from the uh, from the original, and we want to choose one of these at random. So we're going to use a random node, uh, random, which will allow us a random choice. So instead of having a range that I'm choosing randomly from, I've got three discrete choices. I'll choose one of those at random. In fact, thank you, Richard. So that's the fast one. That's the slow one. It's the medium one, which sounds like if you're musical, it's say fifth up from the, um, the root note. And it sounds quite pleasing. And we can uh, save that and test that out. Um, that's already been plugged in, so that's the low one, that's the medium one, that's the high one. I couldn't have asked for any better demonstration. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's one thing you can do. Um, there are other things you can do as well, um, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna do another thing. What I want to show you is exposing a parameter so we can do control outside of the queue. Um, I'm going to create another queue to be able to do this, and it's going to look a little bit similar to that last one that we've done uh, to start off with. Um, I'm going to call it my queue two, and so I've just opened that queue up for editing, and I'm going to uh, make that a bit smaller so that I can just select these three sounds here. And I'm going to drag them in, and it'll create wave players for me there. And um, I'm going to do, to start off with, exactly what we were doing before, which is to randomly choose one of these three. So I'm just going to use a random node. And wire that up. As an output, and give that a test. There we go. And uh, what we need to do is in the pads, because we're using a different queue now, it's just to change which queue we're using. Well, and hopefully. Oh, excuse me. Right, so um, let's go back into the queue. That's not very well if you want some kind of random choice, which we might do. 
Um, but uh, what I'm heading towards is something where you can have some control external to the sound cue uh, to control this. Uh, so instead of having a random choice, I'm going to um, set a parameter which is a number, and the number will choose which of the sounds is going to be played. Um, now, you might think it would be easier and more straightforward just to set up uh, three separate cues, um, and you could do it that way. Uh, but you might have some game logic uh, where you have an object where the sound that it makes depends on some setting. So, for example, you might have a door uh, that you can approach uh, and you can try and open it, but if it's locked, it makes one noise, and if it's open, it makes another noise, and it actually opens. Um, so um, this is this is a way in which you can get what goes on inside the sound cue depend on something external. Um, and we're going to use this uh, node here, which is called switch. So a switch is a um, in a in programming terms is a control flow. Uh, node which allows only one of these to go through in this case depending on the uh the parameter that was set here and it's actually call it parameter unset if we highlight it it says the name is none and we're going to change that to choice um and if we try and play that oh we need to hook up the app but it will not do anything because it doesn't actually know what that number is yet, that parameter. Um, so what we need to do is we need to set this using an, ex an external script. And we're going to back go back to my pad to do this. And, um, and in order to do this, I'm going to create another variable, which is going to be called sound choice. Uh, so this is what makes it a little bit simpler than actually you probably want. Uh, because you probably want some kind of logic which will determine what uh, sound charts you're going to have. I'm going to make that public, and uh, that's an integer. And then before we play a sound, we need to set which sound is going to be played. Um, so from here, we're going to do set integer parameter. So this is some of the extra stuff that you get is it being, uh, uh, from the sound being a sound node. Sorry, uh, a sound cue rather than um, a wave sound. Um, and this is uh, typical of some of the systems in, in Unreal. It would be nicer if you could just expose the parameters by name and just look straight in. Uh, the system doesn't allow you to do that. It's not um, advanced enough yet for that. Uh, but what you can do is you can say, I know that inside this sound cube, there is a parameter called, and we call it choice. So we need to put the exact name in. And I'm not sure if it's case sensitive or not, so I will fix that. And plug in that value from the sound uh, sound choice. And as we compile, that will give me a, a default value for the sound choice of zero. Um, so that uh, pad should always now play the zero sound, uh, which is a creaking door sound. There we go. But because we've exposed that as a parameter, I can now take uh, a couple more instances of the pad and change that sound here. So I'll make that number two and number one. Let's check those out. So that's still the creaking sound. That's my toilet flushing. And that's a microwave door shutting. Okay. So that's a quick introduction to sound cues. Um, as a quick recap, you can plug them in anywhere where you could plug in a wave uh, sound. Uh, but they give you added functionality that you can use. And in particular, one thing is that you can expose parameters. I will show one of those. But as you could see, there was lots of different nodes and uh, things that you could do there. In this series, I'm not planning to go through each of those nodes in turn. Maybe some point in the future, I'll do this in more depth. But uh, for now, that's it from me.